Let's just pray. Father God, we just bless you today. We thank you for this time to be not just in your presence, but we come to your presence today for a purpose. We come to change, we come to learn, we come to grow, we come to excel, we come to leap, we come to bow, Father God, because we're not going to be the same after today, Father God. We decree and declare it in every aspect of our lives, Father God, that the Egyptians that we saw yesterday, Father God, they're the same Egyptians we're going to deal with this year. We're going to deal with bigger things, better things, Father God. And we decree and declare that we will come with ease, Father God, because we come, Father God, not just come seeking your hand, but we come saying, God, here we are. Change us, mold us, make us, reshape us, change our thinking, change our walking, change our thoughts, talk, talking, God, change everything about us, Father God, so that we can be more like you, so we can be effective Christians, Father God, and do the things that you have called us to do. That's why we're here, God. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. And Father God, just like that lady with the issue of blood, we we may not leave him the same, Father God. We're going to reach out and we're going to touch you. We're going to receive your virtue, Father God, because we decree change in our lives, Father God. And just like we're going to wrestle with the angel, and we're going to say, we're not letting go unless you change us. We're not letting go unless you change us, mighty God. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to thank my pastors for entrusting me the quiet month to before you today. And I give God the glory and the honor, and I pray that whatever it is that I say to you will be a blessing. Amen? Amen. I had an excerpt taken from that's my daily song. I will never be the same. I will never be the same. Today, I'm going to be the same when I apply to this. Tomorrow, I'm never going to be the same when I apply to that. But I promise every day that I'm not going to be the same. Stop that change every day. Stop. Bit by bit, and eventually I will get to where I need to be. So, Amen. I have an excerpt taken from Kenneth Lackland. Now, Henry Lackland is a well known author, and he wrote a lot of books on experiencing God. Experiencing God day by day, experiencing God, worship, different aspects of experiencing God. And the excerpt that I have is for a particular conference that he has. And you have praying for a change. That's like, wow, I like that. Praying for a change. Yeah, we are. Everybody wants to talk about experiencing God. But prayer is my thing. So I speak on my thing. And I like this theme praying for a change. Not just praying, praying for a change. I ain't going to pray for it. So many times I've said, my goodness, it's my prayer. No. I want to see a change in whatever it is since I saw my situation is. We're going to pray because I have the last 10 minutes to dedicate to this. And, and no, because when I finish praying for Sister Isilma, I want Sister Isilma's situation to change. It won't make sense for me to spend my five, 10 minutes praying and then the same thing still there, troubling the sister because she can come back tomorrow <laughs> to meet the stuff again, to listen to the same thing, to hear the same thing, to so pray again. That's just me. So praying for a change. He also went to talk about Isaiah's encounter with the year when Isaiah died. And we all know about that. The year that Isaiah died, he saw the Lord high and lifted up his train through the temple. That's when the coals went on his lips, and all of a sudden, um, Isaiah became a new person after somebody died. There was a change. So now it wasn't the same old Isaiah anymore. 
Now this Isaiah was a new revolutionary, powerful Isaiah that was going out ready to do exploits that he was not in a position to do prior to. That's why he's talking about a change. So again, the focus of this was theme for this particular conference was praying for a change. What have we been doing or have not been doing that has brought our nation to where it is? What have we been doing or what it is that we wasn't doing that caused whatever it is around us to be how it is? At the end of the day, whatever around us is our fight. I said, I mean, I would love to say it nicer. I really would love to, but it is what it is. It's our fault. You know, is that because of what we do or what we do? Or maybe we do something different, do it better, do it more often, something. But if we do it correctly, then we wouldn't have that particular situation. Amen? Again, I come to be nice. It's about learning, reapplying, realigning, and doing it differently. So 2016 will be different and better from 2015. The question is, what kind of praying have we been doing that has not made a difference in this nation? And he went on to say, we don't need more praying as much as a qualitative different relationship with God. That's it right there. But rather casual praying, and we no longer believe that when we pray, God can affect the nation. You see, it's not so much about the quantity of praying, 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 praying. What is the quality of the prayer? What is the quality of the relationship with God? Because I'll be honest with you, right? If you get real close to God, there's a lot of things that you wouldn't even have to pray for. Because a lot of things wouldn't even come near you. A lot of things wouldn't even bother a prayer just because, listen, Sister Iselma is praying, Sister Iselma is close to God. I know I can't fool with Sister Iselma. And guess what? Sister Sharon knows Sister Iselma. So I can't go mess with Sister Sharon either because Iselma will hear about it and Iselma will come after me. Right or not? James 5, 6, 8. James chapter 5 of 16. And she researched it this morning. But I just need you to hear it. I just need what we're dealing with is very good. That's what we need to be. It says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Yesterday, when I was preparing, I was like, God, shouldn't it be the fervent, effective prayer? Shouldn't fervent come first? Fervent means like having a passion for whatever it is to be in. The intensity, the feeling, the intuition, you know, the heart burning urgency to deal with something. I was like, shouldn't that come first? If I'm going to pray about something, shouldn't I at least be forward about it first? I know I read what it said about the people and that are the hands of the second mission before I went out of the past. But to me, you should have a passion about whatever it is first. But no, the whole you have to be effective first. Effective and sister, she was touching this morning. You have to confess about one to another. You have to get rid of whatever you are dealing with before you can help somebody else deal with something else because you can't go forward. And I said, but still, this is just me and God. Yes, I understand that, and I agree with that 100%. But here what it says, the effective form and prayer of a righteous man of the Holy Church. That's a lot of criteria. You got to first confess your faults one to another and get yourself right. Then you have to have a passion for whatever it is. You have to be determined that whatever the situation is, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to change it. It's bothering me enough to do something about it. And then you have to be a righteous man. So you could be effective and far and you're righteous. 
you're not going to avail much. You're going to be far from unrighteous, and if you're ineffective, you're not going to avail much. I was like, oh, wait, I never look at this. Like, this is really deep. This is a lot of criteria you need before your price avail much. So, but on the except for God, this is just me and God. Don't do anything. I said, but I still stick into the forefront seat. It does something have to be laid on your heart hard enough to say, you know what? I am not going to stop praying for this thing. I'm not going to stop dealing with this situation until it's no more. So I, I want to give a little demonstration with this. Come, sister, I said, I got you, sir. I can't put more Let's stand over there. It's like saying, I have a sister with a situation of sin. No, I don't have some situations. Huh? So I don't think to be with me. But what I'm saying is with the scripture, James 5, 6, 5, 16, the effective fervent prayer. This is me. God, I come before you. Sister Sharon, I'm sorry. Brother Matthew, I'm sorry. God, this is Krishna before you. My sister is over there battling. No, this is me. We need to get in the fire with a sister to try to bring her out. I got to be right. Because I put myself in the same line of fire. The same arrows that are coming after her is the same arrows that are now coming after me. And sometimes the arrows can come after me more because they say, Paul, I know this one, I know one for you. Okay? So you got to make sure that you get it right with among you, go before God, get it right. And then this is thy Selma, you're coming out of this thing. And you've got to travel until the situation is no more. Praying for a change. That's what it is. Not just pray because it's okay. Oh, this is something good. When I done, when I done, what? When I get a break. No. And it's just about praying, it's, it's about. I am in this with you until you get out. I am in the long haul with this. We used to do that years ago, you know. But over time passed, we got a little more casual and casual. And sometimes it is say, what? Yeah. I'm about to have your son. I'm hey, going to pray for you. Hey, just a share on Let me pray for this sister. Hey, I'm going to go back. And you put yourself out. Pray for a change. So righteous was like somebody who's morally right and virtuous. So you have to meet all those criteria. Okay? Matthew 11, 12. Matthew 11, 12 says, And from days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered greatly, violent, and the violent take it by force. You know, how much time we, 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 we sit and like, we're waiting for God, we're waiting for God, we're waiting for God, and nothing is wrong with that, you know, but a lot of them are waiting on us. Nothing, and I, I had a situation, and I shared it with Pastor Every that I was praying and praying and praying and praying and fasting and praying and waiting and praying and he is sleeping and praying and everybody praying. And I said, Pastor, I'm praying with this, this thing just is watching them. I said, I don't believe in praying for something for so long. That's just me. I believe what God said. You may speak to it. You may believe what God said. Greater works than Jesus did, we shall do. God said the same authority, we have it. So I, me personally, everybody's nothing. I really don't believe in praying for something. I don't believe in praying for There's a pastor, when I read this evening, he said to me, he said, I understand that, Pastor Edwin. And I said, God, I will do something about it. You fix it when I go. You fix it. That's my problem anymore. I did. Did, 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 I did my part. Okay, now that I am going forward, you come behind and me, you fix it. That's so sad, so good. That's great. So 
what do we need to do to take back our rightful place? Again, praying for change. What do we need to do to take back our communities? What are we doing to take back our families? Are we willing to get in the vehicle and go along the road at night and stop our niece or nephew from doing something stupid? Are we willing to wrestle with them and take the car keys and say, hey, no way I'm going to let you get from here? You will fight me, but I ain't gonna take it personally. I'm not gonna let you do it. But we're gonna continue to wait and say, God, how much uh, how how bad are things bothering us that we want to do something about it? What are we gonna do to take back our children? To take back our nation, to take back our street, St. Thomas, where we school nights. Again, praying for change. What change do we need to see? And what are you willing to do to see that change? Like we said, little prayers will not do it. Passionate, persistent, prolonged prayer will. I remember when all prayer meeting, especially when you pray for your hands, we never get about the one dry eye. When we get up after the ground, everybody's sweaty and for me, all you need to do is put up your religious finger, go in your camp or go. Because it was in no state to sit down in the chair and congregate. That's how our, our prayer meetings used to be. And it wasn't some prayer meetings. It wasn't a prayer meetings for, for holy convocation. It wasn't just a prayer meeting when Pastor Carla passed. It was every prayer meeting. Is that Sharon Amra? You get up, somebody has to fix your clothes quick. Somebody running with your hair piece quick. <laughs> somebody running with your shoe quick. Because when we got done in prayer, we met the same thing we went down fighting, wasn't getting back up. Every prayer meeting had not some. You know? And forget me again, I go hard and say, ouch. I could be wrong, but to me, no prayer functions of fundraisers. It's fundraiser. $20 for prayer breakfast. <laughs> Two hours because we went in the building and we got her come out. Again, I didn't come to be nice. I come for us to be aligned and redirect so we can get it correct. You know, to me, yes, you can go to a prayer function and get iron shot with iron. To me, it shouldn't even be about that. Because you shouldn't sharpen me enough to go back to deal with whatever it is I was fighting before. I'm supposed to come to a prayer session. We're talking about church prayer meeting. We're talking about our community prayer meeting. I'm supposed to go and learn a prayer point that I didn't know before, learn a strategy that I didn't know before. But we won't come out and fight the same for, for a foot situation. For a foot, I don't pass you because you don't dead. I go in on to the sixth foot because I have to move beyond that. My blessings are tied up in the ten foot. And if I stay here with a four foot, when I go get what is mine. But sometimes we get so caught up and we fighting. Fighting. Yeah, but it's the same thing. It's the same thing. We still fight for picture to lay picture to picture. The picture one day laid everything. <laughs> everything back up. Checks boxes like crazy. They got all the landlord, they got cow back, but they got call everybody. Check one day lay. Where are we gonna move from that? I'm not going to a prayer meeting to get sharpened, to go fight the picture to picture. I am going to a prayer meeting. Again, I'm not talking about church prayer meeting. I am talking if I will go out to a prayer meeting. I'm going to a prayer meeting because I want to do. I start with that. What can I do to take me on that? What do we as believers would like we need to do to bring about that change? I remember we had three ladies in this church. More than three. They have two still sitting there. By talking about Sister Nick, Sister Eddie, and Sister Leonis. 
boys. Them three ladies. You look at that Henry Blackaby. We had our own Henry Blackaby right in here sitting down. We still got pasta, we still got pasta every week. But we had our own Henry Blackaby because I remember, and that's when I first came in. That was the way I get my press that from. When I first came in, those ladies they didn't hesitate to pray for anything. And they weren't just praying for you. You you are confident that by then they say, Amen, the situation done. Sister Sharon, I over it. You are confident by the time they reached to Amen. Your situation was done and it wasn't dealing with it anymore. Even if you tried to go back or look for it or pick it up, it wasn't there. I'm not over exaggerating. Them ladies used to come here Saturday morning at a summer in the park and pray. Five okay, they <laughs> <laughs> Them ladies used to come back here Saturday midnight and pray. Them ladies used to come back here Sunday morning and pray. And when them ladies get up, like I said, they couldn't associate with the lady. They had to go exit to the bathroom or to go and come back. Because when they get up, they properly disfigure them. Who ain't pee themselves? Sometimes it's the habit. <laughs> They're well sweaty. They get the anger around people. I remember being here with them praying. And I, you know, just a little Christian just come in and I heard them press up. I said, hey, I ain't going for right by walk. <laughs> it's something that's a prayer where you're supposed to pray, but it walk and the situation ain't come back again. So those that's how I to pray. So I can't pray with my husband. Because <laughs> oh yes, night, Pastor Evelyn for praying for me. She said, Your husband's scared when you pray with him. It's true. She called him in and she talked to him. She said, my wife, we have my wife, right? And I said, Pastor, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to pray for you. Because I swear my husband was going to call him because he said his wife was lost. But to God be the glory, because I'm not going to be dealing with the same thing over and over and over again. So again, praying for a change. Do we want to see a change? Are you willing to go in the battle for another sister and bring them out? Because guess what? When the two of you are now foreign and infected and righteous, then the two of you go home together and go in another battle for another sister and bring her out. Even remember, happy hour. The woman used to come from our old bad island because the woman in global life, when them pray, that's the end of the situation. And back then, it wasn't like, it wasn't like the big prayers pray. Anybody, you're going to call a new one was just walking the church. Go pray for that one. And they let you want, but they all oh, the older one back up that let you want. The situation changed. Amen, amen, amen. That's why when Sister Lynn for here, I really wanted her to be the same Praying for change. How bad do we want our situations to change? Are we willing to stop being no one mediocre religious? Praying for me religious too. You know? Because when I was sharing Pastor Uri, I said, but and then you know what God had to get my attention man. Imagine me, I almost I had to check myself because I reckon myself when I didn't even know. God was showing me the same thing over and over and over every other day. Because I, I get up, I can't sleep at So I am up and like we used to be after three and after two. I am up and like after one every morning for the sun. So I even that time was like, look at my mouth. I pray, I'll be with this, I'll be with that. And every other night, I will see the same thing. The same thing. Me and the ground traveling 
when we are praying over me and agree with me, the situation may change me. And I said, but that don't make sense. How am I praying for something? I'm fasting, I'm traveling, I'm wailing, I'm snorting, I am crying, I am laying down, can't get up. And it's the same thing. God had to put a dark lady that I didn't understand who she was over me, and I'm afraid of the guy that I know who's the name over me. Yes, I pray for who this lady is. He was like, that's what I had to do to get your attention. You were doing a godly thing, a good thing, but not the right thing at the right time. Instead of on the ground praying, I had need to be up taking charge of my situation and doing what I need to do. So I wasn't getting it. And he had to put something in that troubled me enough for me to go and say, well, that does not make sense. Yeah, because you're in a right thing, a good thing, a godly thing, but still a wrong thing at the wrong time. And I was like, whoa, me? Not that I'm perfect, but that's just to show how easily sometimes we could miss it and get caught up in a natural, in a sight, in a cycle, and not realizing. And I thought that wasn't an acceptance of our brain. It's not in our fasting, our wailing, traveling. Who would think that's on a cycle? Who would have thought that was on a cycle? So I share my experience. I don't tell you about it tomorrow now. But I share my experience to realize how much you, even though you're doing what looks right, it will still be wrong at that time before the Lord. So again, praying for a change. Now that we have our solemn assembly, now that we know, let's go forward to make a change. Amen.